If you're prospecting for local businesses and are tired of garbage data coming from D7 Lead Finder at ridiculous scales, then this video is probably for you. In it, I'm going to break down my exact process for generating high quality leads in the scale of thousands to tens of thousands of businesses and contact details, with Apollo being the cornerstone of data. You'll also get, towards the end of the video, an 80% off an Apollo annual plan discount code that's going to let you pull up to 120,000 contacts for just $240. Now, if you can't get 5 to 10 new clients with 120,000 contacts, you've got bigger problems to worry about. But in this video, you'll know exactly how to use those leads for local businesses. So what are some of the principles when it comes to local business prospecting? Well, number one, you need to be specific. And when I say specific, I mean, you need to go down to more than just the industry and try to go down to the service that they're offering. An industry is something truly generic, but the service that this company is trying to offer on a local level is going to be much more impactful in both your messaging and in the way you deliver this campaign and find potential prospects. And I'll show you what I mean a bit later. You need to cut the noise. So when it comes to actually prospecting, especially when you're using tools like Apollo, or if you're doing some custom workflows in Clay, your goal should always be to cut leads, not add leads. And that's because it's really, really easy to find a large pool of leads with a ton of noise. Getting rid of the noise is what's going to help you have higher performance, higher relevancy, and make sure that you're going to continue landing in the inbox across your campaign and not getting emails banned, basically. Be a lead sniper and not a lead generator. This basically means when you can, fit your exact campaign structure and copy to a job title rather than just to a company. So the type of offer you may send a sales director is going to be totally different than the type of offer that you may send a CMO, right? There's different levels of scale and the director may be aware of specific team members that you can call out, may be able to fit the offer around benefiting those team members and just really change the offer in that fashion. Finally, you need the website. There's a few databases that you can use right off the bat. You can use Yelp, but that's going to be manual and pretty low scale. So what I prefer when it comes to just pulling in some leads in bulk, you know, just down and dirty is using Google Maps Scraper. Now, the problem with D7 as a Google Maps Scraper is that it doesn't let you set the distance. So that's why I prefer using Clay. With Clay, you can set the exact proximity radius to the city that you want in order to make sure you're targeting very, very specific businesses. So if you have a solution that's only relevant to businesses in a certain area, such as a government contract for one city like Austin, then you're actually going to be able to be super duper targeted with exactly where you place this little marker and pull in businesses from. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to pull some lawn care businesses. But here's just, you know, a quick example. If you just hit this and you say hit new blank table, it's going to pull in up to 200 businesses super fast set by the proximity that you said. With those businesses, you can then pull them, export them, or add more businesses by hitting the search again and just putting in a new location to the bottom of this list. And with that, you'll be able to go over to Apollo and hit import, bulk from CSV, map the website, map the name, and get those businesses. If they're missing a website, you can use Serper Dev to run Google searches in bulk to find the exact website that was missing by putting in the name of the company and the type of work the company does. If they don't have a website, they're not worth your time anyway, but that's just a few different ways that you can go about doing that. That's one way. And with this, you can do 200 businesses per city and quickly, quickly, quickly put together a list of, you know, 10,000 businesses in the course of like 15 minutes. So what's another way to go about it? Because Google Maps scraping is almost never going to get you every potential local service business. What I like to do is take an iterative approach using Apollo, and it comes back to that idea of using services. So before we get into that, I'd love to give you the discount code for Apollo so you can dive in and potentially pull a list yourself. To get the discount, all you have to do is go to apollo.io and input this exact link, which I'll drop in the bio of this video. And using this link and ensuring that you use a new Apollo account under a new domain, you'll be able to apply for 80% off a basic or professional plan and with instant data scraper or by utilizing a tool like exportapollo.com or a leads, you'll be able to pull hundreds of thousands of contacts using that account without issue and ensuring that you have all of those contacts saved. Definitely check that out. It's super worth it to get 120,000 contacts for 240 bucks is an absolute no-brainer and could be a game changer for any business. Without further ado, let's go into my 
iterative process of finding out how I'm going to go about prospecting for a business inside of Apollo, specifically a local business. Here we have a company called Lawn Savers. Now, my goal here when I use Ocean isn't to actually use the platform because it's a bit pricey, but instead I like to just go into Google and insert a service that I'm looking for locally and pull a business that looks really legit. So in this case, I found one that has 11 to 50 employees. I can take that business and I can open a new tab by just hitting control and click. And I can pull a few other of its lookalike businesses in order to have a couple businesses that I can then throw into Apollo by duplicating and take a look at the exact keywords that they use to represent their business. The benefit of this is you're no longer spraying and praying with keywords, hoping that you're getting the right types of businesses. They're gonna give you a template of the exact types of businesses that you want to be outreaching to just by throwing that company into the website section here. Now, hopefully this exists in here. So here we can see a ton of awesome keywords where honestly, I would have had no idea what de debt hatching Detaching? Is that supposed to be detaching? Dethatching? I had no idea what dethatching is. Mosquito control, fleas and ticks control, tree and shrub care. I would have never typed these things in. So this is highly beneficial and it lets you see the services that are often adjacent to lawn care services. Rather than just throwing in an industry like landscaping, we now have a specific service offering that we can tailor our outreach to. I hope number one, that that helps. From there, we're gonna take these keywords and we're gonna copy them over to a document. If it lets me expand, it's not gonna let me expand fully. So I'll actually just click on the company. We'll take these keywords. We'll throw them into the document on another tab here. And with those keywords, we're gonna be able to start honing in on our exact ideal prospect. Now, when it comes to the size of the company, I would love to look at. And to be honest, for the sake of this video, we won't go through some of these other businesses. We'll just use that one because it had a lot of keywords right off the bat. What we can do is begin including keywords. And you're going to notice that I ignore the industry. And that's because the industry is so much less relevant than the keywords that are available in the company name, the SEO description, etc. A lot of people put their industry as something totally off base to what they actually do. And then there's a lot of other companies that are sneaky and try to put their industry in the wrong category in order to get attention from specific prospects. So Right off the bat, I'm gonna teach you a quick hack. And that hack is to remove marketing businesses if they're not in your demographic, of course, as an industry. Yeah, is not any of, perfect. Staffing and recruiting businesses, right off the bat, remove that. And then let's start going through the iterative process of actually finding leads. And towards the end of the video, we'll talk more about what being a lead sniper would be like with an example with this campaign, which you know, maybe with a local business, it's not 100% as relevant, but in a future video, I'll definitely go through more detail on what that looks like targeting a specific job title with a specific offer. In terms of keywords to include, we have our list over here. So we'll throw in lawn care, weed control with an extra E. Now imagine if we just put in weed, that'd be a problem, right? This is why we need to know the keywords. Core aeration, awesome. We're getting a pretty cool lead list here. And then one of the things I like to do is start going through the list that I'm getting here and looking at some of the noise that's coming through. So automation for agriculture really doesn't sound like something I wanna be involved in. So what I might do is remove keyword automation. And basically what you're gonna do from this point on is take five minutes to try to find out exactly what the noise is in your search and slowly, again, iteratively, Basically the way you would train an AI, you know, continuing to find the problems within its output and then adding those problems basically into the input as things it shouldn't do. This is what you're doing. We don't necessarily want marketplaces, but this lists itself as a consumer service. And you're noticing that I'm actually not touching employees or touching the company location yet, because all I care about is making sure that the right types of businesses are showing up first. And then we can get to the point of narrowing the list down to location, employees, um, even more specific locations or technologies, because first things first, I wanna make sure I'm getting the right pool of businesses. So we've got a few keywords that are doing a good job. Almost all of these businesses are to do with lawn care. One thing I might remove is crop protecting and agriculture. Now for sake of time, we'll stop there. But what I would do is continue building out this list over the course of five to 10 minutes and you know, then I would move on to employee count. And 
Of course, these businesses are going to have, on average, quite a bit lower employee counts. Let's pull that account location. Let's get Canada. Let's get United States. And then from there, I would pull in employees and I would do an employee range that's custom. Personally, I think when it comes to local businesses, anything between four and 50 to four and 100 is a good place to start. However, before you do something like this, make sure you've tested the size of the company and how it impacts your campaign performance and impacts messaging. So I found that across different employee sizes, I'm not seeing a huge difference in the overall performance of this campaign for this client. So instead of doing save search or find people on a bunch of lists, I'm just doing it quickly. So let's just say, you know, 2.8K, that's a pretty good number. Oh, I've been good to get a bit more. Maybe I drop it down to three if I want a few, uh, another thousand more. Maybe I would add a few more keywords like lawn fertilization, mosquito control, tree and shrub care, tree care, weed control, all of these great little keywords that we can pull directly from Apollo and use that iterative process to finally hit, you know, find people. So select all 3,483 companies, will it find people? And from there, we're left with 14,000 people. I personally like to use likely to engage verified and unverified because I'm double verifying my lists anyway. And then from there, we're left with 6.8 thousand people. You can see a few of them are already saved. So that's good. That's why you save your lead lists. And from here, I would just filter for the job titles I want to see. So in this case, I would just throw in a persona here and boom, we have 1.1 thousand leads, quick and easy, quick and dirty. From there, we could look at adding in a few more, you know, a few more filters, uh, opening up the number of employees, opening up the locations potentially. And what I tend to do is once I have a good search, I'll actually just hit right click duplicate on a company level search and I'll reiterate that search with new terms, reiterate that search with more terms and change up the locations if there's more locations that are applicable, just making sure that all the locations that I pull are within the same time zone. Once this is done, I would take three to four people from these businesses. Um, in other cases, if it's a single job title that I'm targeting, like a you know VP of marketing, for instance, or business development manager, I would just uh, limit number of people per company to two likely. In this case, since it's a larger set of job titles, I would limit it to four. And from there, I would uh, change the people selection, hit max people, hit save. And then once you hit save, you hit refresh, you open up this bad boy right here, and you can actually just pull the leads directly from Apollo or use a scraper like aleads or apolloexport.com or exportapollo.com. And you can pull the lists for super duper cheap, bypass Apollo export limits, and get your list super quick and dirty. So that's basically my process for finding local leads at scale. Lawn care is not the biggest market, but bigger markets, you can expect lists of like 4,000, 5,000 every time you do this, depending on what you're looking for. But yeah, let me know if you have any questions down below. Let me know if videos like this are helpful uh, and leave a comment if you'd like to see other types of prospecting videos or any other types of videos. Again, check the link in the description to get 80% off Apollo. Remember to sign up with a new domain and definitely check out Clay with my code to get 3,000 free credits, which is a $40 value to start experimenting with these awesome tools. Peace.